traditional media. While uh, the other mediums were dealt with a heavy blow, digital became a big part of the marketing post COVID. We've seen marketers push the envelope with innovations on digital, changing their media mix to include new age platforms. And tell us more about this fast growing medium. We're now joined with Vishal Chinchankar, the CEO of Madison Media and the Madison Alpha, who's going to be talking on Connected TV, a powerful addition to marketers' toolbox. But with this, a huge round of applause for Vishal. Hello. Good evening, uh, everyone. I know it's 7 o'clock and the last speaker, and I don't want to come in between you all and the bar. So I'll try and keep it short and sweet. But before I start, I want to thank Avinash because I think he's covered a lot of my connected TV conversations. And I want to thank Nagra because he took my name twice in his presentation. On that note, connected TV, a new kid of the block. Uh, must be crossing our minds. Does it have scale? Is it a trend? Is it a fad? Or is it even efficient? Right? Let me try and answer some of these questions today. Uh, uh, I, I strongly believe uh, that this is your mistake, and definitely there are certain numbers that I'll probably try and project as to how these uh, this trends probably look like. So, let's look at then, now and next. 2014, e-commerce was barely about 54 million. It's now residing at roughly around 329 million. Now, television is about 892, that's today, 92 million. And mobile videos have crossed close to about more than 450 odd million. Connected TV, currently, it's at a very low base of about 44 million. Expected to go to about 120 million by 2025. I mean, that's some of our estimations. There are various bodies which are trying to give me. I think the point I'm trying to establish is this is not a fact. This is definitely something which is real estate and come in a big way. Let's see how US uh, looks at it. India is not too far from what kind of happens in the US, so we're somewhere very, very close. Right? Two-thirds of the US population are connected TV monthly users. That's a whole lot of uh, big number that we're talking about. Four out of 10 US senior citizens use CTV. Hulu made the maximum amount of ad revenues followed by YouTube in US. And a staggering number of 14.44 billion ad revenues have been made on connected TV. 14.44 billion is more than India, all addicts were sampled and today. So that's the kind of advertising revenues that connected TV is being made in for. US makes out of connected TV. Well, I've established uh, the fact that we're close to, maybe close to about 200 and, uh, 120 or million by 2025. But if you see the story of connected TV in the last five years, it's really been building up. It's grown 9x. Now this is the kind of affluent audience which is getting built and thanks to uh, various different reasons, maybe I'll try and cover most of these reasons. Now what is really fueling the growth of connected TV? Data prices, I will not spoke about some broadband prices and here it is, 2014, per GB cost was 250 bucks in India, which came down to 18 bucks in 2018. And as we speak today, it's about six and a half to seven rupees per GB. That's, that's making it more affordable. Low smart TV prices. India's smart TV shipment grew by 65% year on year in Q2 of 21. That's a, that's a very large number staring at us. I mean, that's definitely a big thing that's happening at the back. Chinese manufacturers have played a pivotal role. We all love the Xiaomi's of the world. But they've also introduced smart TVs which are less than 15,000 rupees. A leading OEM is shipping roughly around 10,000 smart TVs a week. Uh, 
that's a, you know, a smart engine that's moving and it's really feeding in a lot of growth. The, the original content on OTT is one of the biggest driving factors. We all have been tuned down to the, the catchy content. On one hand, the S view is subscription uh, prices are going southwards. Recently, we know even Netflix has reduced their price. And on the other hand, most of the telcos are doing a great bundling of all these OTT products. You get geo fiber for about what thousand bucks a month, where you get cable, you get telephony, you get uh, broadband up to 150 Mbps, and you also get all the OTT stuff. Tata Sky, which is now Tata Play, is got a service called as Binge, offering you 14 OTT services. Now this is making it much, much easier and uh, you know getting a lot of growth on the space. And the last, uh, but not the least, of course, it's a very small number, but the Chromecast and the Fire Sticks, which are now as affordable as 2,500 to 3,000 bucks, are also one of the biggest enablers of these numbers. Let's look at who this audience is. We keep talking about affluent, but let's see who these affluents are. And I like to call them God shavers, and God shavers are the one who are watching linear TV, but at the same time also watching connected TV. And then there are cord cutters who are completely migrated onto connected TVs. By the way, there's also a terminology called as cord nevers, which are the kids who probably now going would have never seen linear TV, but will only grow on a connected TV. Right? So that's, that's the kind of audience we're talking about. The some of the research done by Media Smart, 78% of respondents had smart TV, which was fairly distributed demographic, and 93% of the users access internet based content on their smart TVs. This is an affluent elite. He owns a car, he owns a smart TV, of course. See the kind of uh, subscriptions that he's taken, he probably may be paying more than about five to six thousand bucks annually to subscribe these OTT platforms. Also, one more thing, sorry, it's, it's female skew. It's the television viewership. Uh, you see a lot more females watching this uh, OTT uh, smart TV platforms. Let's see the kind of time spent. Uh, There's close to about anywhere between one hour to four hours time spent on connected TV. YouTube reports about two hours. And if you look at some of the stats, 91% uh, predominantly watch movies and entertainment. About half of them, which is roughly 51%, are into music, gaming, or watching news. So, to your point, Avinash, I think watching news is also one of the big things that's getting consumed on OTT now. Right. And if I have to compare this with a linear TV, linear TV is what, roughly three, three hours a day. This is getting very close to even linear TV. So, what's in for the marketeers? A big question for all the marketeers. I'll try to give you a bit of a thousand feet view on what are the nuances that or the benefits that it really adds. But I'll try and also demonstrate in terms of numbers and give you a bit of a simulation as to if I have to really talk about tweets and you know CPMs and how does it even stand up. So it's for a highly engaged user thanks to the stickiness of the content. Uh, it's highly immersive. The quality of ad is very large. It's probably on the uh, high, very impactful. You can do real time buying, you can get real time forecasting, you can get real time reporting, and thanks to most of the private marketplaces that you can start on this inventory. Of course, co viewership, which is again now coming back from me to me trend, but it, it gets in by connected uh, TV. There is a sharp targeting available. Uh, clearly, you can get over the spin get over the reduce the wastage as a marketer. Measurement, of course, this measurement is not a common currency bar measurement that currently gives you. You have to depend on the console or whichever VMD that you use. But it's measurable. I mean, you can really look at frequency, you can see attributions, you can see most of the measured potential. And uh, you can reach out to global audiences and the cord cutters. 
uh, which is also a decent number, right, which is contributing. And there are a huge number of people who are not watching, they don't have cable at home, they only have internet and they watch connected TV. So I just picked up this uh, slide from Nagraj's uh, presentation earlier, if you've seen the slide, where he spoke about most of the universes and what are the mediums really, uh, the numbers of the mediums that are doing this back now. And I tried to give it a, you know, some sort of a CPM uh, to most of these mediums. You have television which still operates in the range of 45 to 65 bucks. There is OTT which includes YouTube in the range of 90 to 120 bucks. HDD three times of TV, I look at it around 140 to 160 odd bucks. And connected TV is still efficient in the same range because I don't think as we speak there isn't much premium because the base is low, it's affordable, but that's what the console gives you today. Sorry, say that again. Absolutely, absolutely. Now let me just prove this point in form of simulation. I made one of my kids do this a simulation. We picked up one of the pants. Uh, look, in Madison we do roughly around 200 odd plus media plans a month. And 35-40% of the media plans have either just region specific, network specific, you know, just look at these kind of markets and all that. And what, what is it, what the beauty about connected TV is that it gives you a geofencing which currently your television can't give you, right? Linear TV can't give you. Can't do state-wise, area-wise and whatever. So that's, that's where the, the real play comes in from connected TV. And this is a simulation of a plan of uh, all adults 22 to 40 NCCSA. And you can see the last column, right, on the CPM. It's 50% efficient than a linear TV. Look, reaching out to affluent audience is extremely difficult. I mean, you've got to really pay out your nose. But this is an animal which can really help you get these audiences. <coughs> it's easy to, and this is the same dashboard where you saw all the previous numbers of 90 CPM and a reach of 10.6. That's on the left hand side. It's, it's easy to plan. I mean, even any of your media planners can just get onto the console and get your reach and frequency and a forecast and of it. You can pick and choose whatever channels you want, whether it's Z or Sony or whatever, but provided those channels are affiliated with the private marketplace and the PMPs. Yeah. That makes me move to the last point, which is on APIs and measure measurements. And of course, these are not uh, the common currency measurements, but you definitely there's a system which gives you a view through rate and a completed view and most of the hard KPIs that the typical marketer would look for. It's all, uh, all given up by the system. There are major branded studies, uh, purchase intent studies or sales sales studies that can also be done using your partners. And uh, you know the beauty is it, it also addresses the bottom of the funnel. It's not just about future frequency. And I'll, I'll make that point to one of the case studies, which I have sort of borrowed from one of my partner. But I think the point is if you really have some advanced analytical tools like ADH, you can also get attributions to the bottom of funnel and it will tell you the what is the kind of scale that this particular medium can help you achieve. Of course, the scale is too small. 44 million is a very, very small number. But, you know, if I go back to what Nagaraj presented on CPIR, cost per incremental reach, I think if this is going to give me the best cost for that particular audience, I'll probably consume this first, the entire audience, and then move on to the next medium. Right? I spoke about uh, showing this uh, live. This is one of the case studies of Max. Now, insurance as a category. One of the biggest triggers that they look for, or the, or the matrix of success that they look for in their campaign, is a spike in DSQ, crank search queries. Now, this is an example uh, where they use connected TV. They, show, they saw a spike of 21%, pretty evident. Right? So, it's definitely working well for most of the cranks. This is 
another interior design company who, who was very delighted to see about 63% of higher average order value, which means that there is tremendous to this audience and it's also impacting the door funnel. So I think uh, so reaching out to this African audience, we've got a great platform, maybe very small, but expected to really grow much, much faster than anticipated. Uh, will it redefine television advertising today? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe five years down the line, probably yes. But as marketers, we need to take the first step and stay invested. Thank you. So, uh, thank you so much, Vishal. We just requested to join us on the center stage. Uh, Neema, I'll call upon uh, Siddhar Dwari, the MD of MIQ, to kindly join us. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge, huge round of applause. Thank you so much. Come on, audience, you can be much better with our applause. So, on the stage, we have Siddhar and uh, Vishal. And we're giving away a memento, co-part by our partners, Yahoo. So have peace with the audience. Thank you. And one magic photograph right there. <laughs>